live in a world awash with images. They tell us what to eat, where to go, how to live, and how to dream. We make life-changing decisions with the help of a snapshot. But in the digital deluge are pictures that bring us self-doubt. Images of beautiful people living perfect lives. And now, millions of people are taking selfies, seemingly in control of their image, but actually becoming self-obsessed and insecure. Perhaps the camera that's enslaved us could also set us free. By exploring the idea of the body beautiful, maybe we can rediscover the genuine beauty of individuality. To do that, we need a master photographer. My name is Rankin. In 20 odd years, I've photographed thousands of people and increasingly, they have something in common, unease. There's this illusion that people love taking pictures of themselves and love being in photographs or love photography. It's not true. Most people that come into my studio, they feel initially uncomfortable. The beauty bar may be set too high and I've helped put it there. If I'm part of the problem, I want to be part of the solution. I've set myself a challenge to photograph four people, two from the selfie generation and two who are older. They all positively hate their appearance and the camera. I want to show them what they see as flaws in a new light. It looks heroic. This is gone. They don't know what's going on in your head. What do you not like about, about your face? I think you're brilliant. I believe character and individuality equal beauty. And in losing sight of that, we've been robbed of the power of confidence. What I would like is to be able to take the four subjects and give them the power back. My name is Alison Lapper. As an artist, I've often photographed my body to ask questions about beauty, though I don't press the buttons myself. Here we go. Growing up, I soon learned that some bodies conform to an ideal, but not mine. I was raised in an institution where they wanted us to look more normal. There were artificial limbs to help society feel less uncomfortable. I left at 17 with my own ideas of beauty. In 2005, in Trafalgar Square, naked, pregnant and disabled, I was 13 tons of questions about beauty, thanks to the artist Mark Quinn. Rankin has used the camera to reveal the person in personality. Together, we want to explore the boundaries of what we all find beautiful. Beauty is not one particular way. It can be in many different shapes and forms. Now I've got the chance to work with Rankin and with people who are used to hiding their bodies away. We want to show them the power and the beauty of looking different. Ali, well, I kind of know Ali. She's a media phenomenon. So I've seen her in artwork. I've seen her on TV. I've seen her on the, the fourth plinth, which I thought was one of the most amazing pieces of sculpture. More than anything, her personality is very attractive to me. I like people that are outspoken and uh, gobby. This is where we hope four people that are anxious about their appearance might see themselves differently just coming to a photo studio will be a challenge. Where do you want me? If I slide off, just catch me. Love it. I am relaxed, comfortable, I'm enjoying it. I like being the center of attention. This didn't happen yesterday. It's taken years and years of learning to love who I am and how I look to be this confident. Wow. Do you like the idea of it? I love though? it, yeah. I had three years of doing an art degree where I completely just looked at me and that really changed how I felt about me. And, you know, did sculptures of myself, put them on the wall. Great. Tutor came in and said, you've got great tits. And I thought, great, Mom, doing OK then. Fierce face. Yes. Boom. That's what I want. I was kind of going for that, like, wanting to put her on a pedestal, but wanting her to have that 
I love her feet. It's like she's almost kind of going, it's very sculptural. It's independence. She's balancing on this and making it work. I love it, and it, it just makes me look like the strong person that I, that oh, I am. It's quite sexy. Best foot forward. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Great. It's so easy to get something out of Ali because she's there wanting to give it to you and she's got that confidence. That's wicked. Oh, I like that. Great, I love that. Hold that. The people we're about to shoot, there's going to be a whole range of things that they've not got and they're not prepared for and that's kind of part of the process of what we're doing is trying to help them build up that confidence to be able to step in front of the camera. No two people give you the same thing in a photograph, so... You're always looking for the individualism. I'm always looking for what's different about people, not what's similar. It's down to me to, to bring them to camera. It's going to be hard, because I don't know how people are going to respond. They don't feel confident or sexy or good-looking. All those things that we're all supposed to feel that actually probably most people really don't. I think it's going to be a real challenge for them. Our subjects all know about Rankin's offer of a photo session. But before that, I want to know more about them and why they've spent years avoiding the camera. While I know a few details, each visit will be a journey of discovery for me. First, it's Damien in Merseyside. He is a left-sided amputee. It sounds like he's really struggling with his body image um, and when people are staring at him and he maybe has quite a lot of difficulties with the way that, that he looks. Our participants have been asked to dig out their old photos. Now that everyone takes digital pictures, the actual paper print is a rarity. Family snaps already feel antique. They came from the chemist smelling like science. Like faces, they were often imperfect, but pre-Photoshop, they were a bit truer. Even the fuzzy ones jerk you back in time. I remember that. That was very exciting. I got to sit on a car, and I was obsessed by my dad having this Escort, and he was very proud of the car at the time. What strikes me is the difference between then and now. Now everything is so much more disposable. You know, pictures like this with the mistakes from the from a chemist, that's very precious, whereas that'll just be deleted now. I think that photography is in danger of losing what it originally was meant to do, which was to capture moments. These are objects. They stay with me. I love them. I care for them. They tell me about my life. Am I going to do that through some social media account? I don't know. Damien's appearance changed suddenly in his late teens. At 16, I developed uh, a limp and a lump just above my left hand knee, um, but it didn't go away and continued to get bigger. It was cancer, basically, which had unfortunately by that time spread right the way up my leg. So it ultimately led to me having an amputation from the hip down, which comes in handy for some things. <laughs> In some ways, he's, he's kind of proud of this leg. And he's worked with um, the technician and the prosthetist to produce this. Kids tend to think it's a bit space age and it's a bit sort of Terminator. It really is quite heavy. It's a massive achievement to be able to walk with it at all. Damien's photos show a handsome lad in the thick of the action. He was one of the guys. Yeah, happy childhood. This is the last photograph of me. Oh, that's obviously me in the middle. I mean, did you look at yourself in a mirror? No, you went to it's a what, yeah, actually, it's, it, I used to have mirrored wardrobes, or there was a bureau unit in, in my bedroom, and I asked my mum to take the mirrors out. Really? Because you'd see what you'd look like. And it was just horrendous. Like this one, for instance. The first thing I see mm -hmm. is I look at the leg. Yeah. I'd convince myself in my mind that it should be hidden away and it shouldn't be seen. Damien's problem isn't what other people say, it's what they might be thinking, which is that he looks unusual. Rankin needs to photograph unusual as powerful. When you look in the mirror, what do you really see? Well, I don't like what I see. It, it doesn't feel like I'm whole. It's when you see your public reflection, it still jars. Yes. I mean, I was always vain when I was younger. Yeah, 
but I've always cared about my appearance. And has that changed? It's been compromised. I don't look at the photo. Mm. I look at the bit that's wrong. You're going to be putting yourself in somebody else's hands to take, hopefully, amazing pictures. And I'm hoping that if I can be seen in a very positive way, that that will appease me. So when I look in the mirror, I'm not ashamed and I'm not right. embarrassed. Damien's partner, Sue, sees what he can't see, a whole person. He sees a victim in the mirror, but we see a survivor. All he sees is the part that's missing. He was limiting what we could do because of how we felt people were going to perceive him. And one of my phrases was always, stop being a prisoner in somebody else's eyes. Around the age Damien lost his leg, I made a decision about my disability. I could either try to look like everyone else or I could shove my difference in the world's face. I moved on, but I think Damien got stuck. Luckily, our generation didn't have social media. We couldn't compare our bodies to millions of perfect ones. My teenage postings would have confirmed how different I was. Social media is more about showing how we can all look the same. This is the kind of thing I would wear to take a selfie. I always stand like slanted down, one bended knee. Sometimes I might use a door as well and then take a selfie with the door. I don't like that one, nor that one, nor that one. Faye is a model. She's used to being looked at, but when she takes a selfie, she's being judged as well. On a lot of smartphones, you've got a feature called Beauty Face, which will just totally smooth your face as soon as you take the picture. I know friends of mine that have Botox, they've had lip fillers, um, they have boob jobs. I think they take an image, don't they, of a celebrity and say, I want to look like that. It's, it's the norm, isn't it, these days? Faye Louise isn't part of our project. She's ready for the rating, which is part of social media. But Alana, our second participant, dreads it. There have been days where I've taken sort of 200 plus selfies a day and end up deleting all of them because I didn't like any. I used to use social media. I'd be on it constantly, looking at friends, friends of friends, celebrities, and looking at the way they looked and wishing I could be like that. Alana is a teenager, and from the pictures that I've seen, she is gorgeous. It starts off with one layer of foundation, blusher, another layer of foundation, concealer, lipstick, and mascara. But she has a mental health condition that she looks at herself and feels ugly to the point where she's now a prisoner in her own home. It used to take me four hours. And even then, sometimes it still wouldn't be right and I wouldn't be able to go out. I hate my face in general. I'm just disgusted by it. I hate my nose. My skin I just find absolutely vile. I just think I'm gross. I used to think I was so bad that it would be cruel to other people to put them through seeing my face. You know, I thought I deserved to die, be locked away in a dark room. I have to check in different lights, different mirrors, see all the marks and blemishes, constantly checking, constantly reapplying makeup throughout the day. This is more than teenage angst. Alana has body dysmorphic disorder. It's a mental illness that can lead to isolation, self-harming, and sometimes even suicide. When she was 14, Alana started to see something frightening in the mirror. The little blonde kid who'd happily smiled for the camera stopped appearing in the family photo albums. What do you see when you look in the mirror? I see marks, I see blemishes, I see bumps, I see lumps all over my face. I also skin pick. I will sit in the mirror and pick at all the marks and all the blemishes so the skin was sort of broken and raw. So if somebody said to you, like myself, mm. you know, I think actually you're very attractive. I don't take that as truth, no. Right. When you see magazines full of airbrushed celebs, mm. how does that make you feel? It just automatically comes up the feeling of you know, hatred towards yourself, you know, why can't I be like that? The photo shoot mm. with, with ranking, how do you think you're going to prepare yourself? Yeah. I've never really let other people take photos of me, or have control of what's being taken. But I'm also hoping that it will change the way I see myself, possibly. Alana's obsessed with her warped self-image. 
She's trapped. I think there's a lot of brave face going on. I mean, you know, she was telling me about how she felt about her face. I found that really shocking and, and profound. I wouldn't be surprised if we got there and she went, can't do it. The technology changes, but the job of the portraitist doesn't. Rubens, Rembrandt, Renoir, Rankin. We're all out to make a likeness that shows the sitter and the viewer something more than a mirror would. Portraits were used to show status or beauty, but always uniqueness. That's the quarry, the thing you want to reveal. The selfie portrait is different. It's not about the beauty of individuality, but the comfort of conformity. The image industry peddles a generic look that everyone can strive for, but that's just out of reach. Beauty is a commodity, rather than something we all have for free. And once everyone has bought it, when everyone looks the same, the target moves. It's important that I think that kids like Alana understand that this is ephemeral, it's, it's a moment. What she has going on in her head is a preconceived notion of what is beautiful. And what we're trying to do is say, it's been changing and shifting for years and years, and it's, it's a created thing. Even if it's created by her peer group, and the people in her peer group can be Kim Kardashian now because everyone takes a selfie, it's artifice, it's fabricated. These are from the 1890s and the aesthetic is completely different. And even within my time as a photographer, we've gone from glamour, like supermodels, to waifs, to heroin chic, to now it's like a mixed match of everything. You know, you can see at this period you've got like pinched waist, large breasts, big bums, and a very unusual fascination with curly hair. Within 30 years of this, girls wanted to look like boys. Damien will be the first to brave Rankin's camera. And brave is the right word. Even a negative self-image can be familiar. Change can be unsettling. Well, the photographs are really, really not telling me much, actually. This guy seems happy, so it feels to me like this is something that he may have bottled up for a long time. Yeah, he's really not comfortable to wake up after what happened and no leg and no counselling. There's a lot of staff feelings, emotion, because he wasn't really allowed to, to talk about it. It's almost like it's taken his manhood away. Meeting Damien in the flesh is very reassuring. His photos didn't show how handsome he is. The hair and makeup team will spruce him up a bit, but he's a bloke, and they know not to make him feel emasculated in any way. When I talked to Damien on the phone, his big thing was that he, he wanted to show how invasive the prosthetic is and how difficult it is. So we've agreed to do him in shorts, showing the high-tech prosthetic with how high it is. It's maybe one with the prosthetic on, one with the prosthetic off. I'm really excited. It's a completely new experience, so I'm intrigued to know what the photograph's going to look like, really. There he is. It's amazing. Yeah. Can I see you walking it? Yeah, yeah. The prosthetic's impressive, but without Damien, it's just a bit of metal. The shorts force us to celebrate his victory. In trousers, he's just a bloke with a limp. I want him to revel in what he is now, not what he used to be at 16. It looks amazing. Yeah. It's kind of like Robocop or something. Um, it looks cool. Great, let's have a quick look at those. Wow. I like that. I'd never dreamed of previously being photographed like that where you can see the full entirety uh, of the prosthetic. Definitely don't see that when I see myself. That looks quite alien to me. I'm not really sure that it is you. me. Damien doesn't feel part of the classical picture of, of beauty. Your male models, sporting prowess. Uh, and I would just like him to feel that he is and he doesn't need to hide away. It looks heroic. I don't know how that feels for you when you well, look Well, seeing at myself it. like that is different because I never view myself as being like that. I always feel quite vulnerable. The power, the strength is phenomenal. I look at that and I'm like, anyone that's dealing with that is a hero. This is gone. That, that means you're dealing with that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. It's like, don't mess with me. Yeah. And I promise you, the gap and what you're filling it with is very, very brave. To me, it shows strength. And that's what I see 
all the time. I've never seen myself in that way before. No hiding away from that. It's quite hard to look at, really. I think you should be proud of it. That could be a monumental move in the right direction to start maybe accepting what I am or what, what's happened to me. It represents all of the, the difficulties that you've gone exactly. through since you were 16 years old. I'm very pleased with that. Good. I'm really glad you like it. I'd like to do the one without. Think, yeah, let's yeah. do it. I really don't think a photograph can change someone's mind immediately about themselves. I think that it can be part of a process of, of healing. One of the things that a lot of people would say to me is, I didn't think I looked like that. I didn't think that was what I was like. And it's just a matter of perspective and how you're viewing yourself. I certainly prefer the image with the prosthetic on than the one without. I think you can see a bit of the vulnerability coming. Yeah, there. you can. This makes you feel dependent. Exactly. I like And this doesn't. The leg makes you feel like you're in control of yeah. it. You know, it's stronger. This is a more like you're challenging the world. He's saying, yeah, and he's mate. saying sorry. Yeah, I think I'm the person on the right. Right. When I should be portraying the person on but the you, left. you don't even should be. It's not a conscious decision. You're just mm. doing it. Look. One of the words that I'd used about what I wanted to achieve from this was empowerment. Gosh. And I think it certainly achieved that. And it doesn't make me feel vulnerable. It doesn't make me feel ashamed. It makes me feel proud. Thank you for doing it. And I'm glad I've been a part of it. I think you look great. Yeah. I wasn't at all sure it was going to turn out as amazingly positive and brilliant as it has. I hope he feels this upright man is me, not this underdog. I've got a smile across my face, which is always a, a good sign. Um, it's not been there for a long time, but yeah, the whole thing has been a fantastic experience. Are you 16 again? Yeah, but with a lot more confidence, <laughs> a lot more self-belief. It's um, wonderful. The difference between how we look and how we think we look it's partly about whose opinion we value. At art school, I use my body as a tool. I made art that pleased me and saw strength that I was proud of. We studied sculptures that were classically beautiful but had no personality. I had bags of that. I knew they were the ideal and I wasn't. So I found one paragon especially confusing and Venus was her name. I can never understand why she is considered to be the most beautiful, iconic sculpture that anybody's ever laid their eyes on. And yet I'm looked at as disabled, deformed, ugly. And yet if you look at my body and you look at her body, apart from her legs, you know, her length, I'm almost identical. I learned at 20 that beauty is just an idea that we all agree on, until we don't. Marble Me raised questions and blood pressure in Trafalgar Square. Statues should be of attractive people with arms, like Nelson. Defining beauty isn't important, but to some parts of the fashion trade, keeping it something exclusive and expensive to attain is. Seeing beauty in every face made visual guru Terry Jones a revolutionary back in 1972. For me, the beauty is always in the imperfections. I always like the, the imperfect image because the perfect image always looks so boring. And so you're looking for something that has that kind of energy and has that truth. At 27, Terry became one of the most influential art directors in the world when he took over at British Vogue. The issues before I was there, the model was like a mantelpiece ornament, like a decorative object. And I was much more interested in treating people as people. In 1980, he created ID Magazine, which celebrated youth, style, and real faces. The role of Vogue was to produce a world that was hardly attainable. With ID, what we tried to do was produce something which was attainable and part of your life, but it was still extraordinary. You just moved over to real people? Yeah, the people to be photographed were on the street. They looked brilliant the way they were. That diversity was really important. If they can express themselves, everyone has that beauty making yourself different rather than the same. There's an unspoken social agreement about how we should all look. It won't have caused Alana's mental illness, but it can't have helped. Her therapist, Rob Wilson, must prepare her for Rankin's shoot. 
When it comes to actually standing in front of the camera, mm. what, what kinds of thoughts do you think are likely to pop up into your mind at that point? I think I'll just be overwhelmed with anxiety. Yeah. Rankin will have photographed, I don't know how many hundreds of people or something, but I'll be the one that doesn't, doesn't work out. You know, how will they look? What if they're absolutely disgusting? And then they're shown to people. I can't really see now how they would be good. So I'm sort of expecting that they won't be. How challenging the photo shoot is going to be for Alana probably will depend a bit on whether she's having a good day or not such a good day. BDD can be very much activated or sort of somewhat deactivated. Um, and if it's really switched on, then the person with BDD is going to feel very self-conscious, very awkward, and then having a lens pointed at you is going to be very difficult. The lens can seem unforgiving, but what it shows us is reality. If we accept the truth of our appearance, we are empowered. That's the journey I want for our third subject. Carly has alopecia. The more her hair fell out, the more she loved hair and all it represented. I trained as a hairdresser. I just wanted to do something with hair and a form of comfort. Carly's hair first fell out when she was 11. Then it grew back and fell out again and again. That would have been when my hair first grew back after I first lost it. OK. I got rid of lots of photographs and I didn't have any photos taken of me. I had all my mirrors covered up in the house. I couldn't look in the mirror or anything. Did you get teased? Yeah, and I remember one boy take pulling my hat off in front of everybody. I just remember screaming and just hiding behind this bush in tears. That was when I was about 17 in my first decent wig. From the age of 11 to about 20, it would just come and go. And then out of the blue, sort of March last year, it was thinning out and it got to the point where there was just nothing there at all. I've always taken pride in my appearance, always gone out with my makeup on and my hair done. It really makes a huge difference when you haven't got your hair. I've always been very open and honest about it, but it's something that, being single, I'd struggle telling somebody if I was going on a date with them. Do you always wear a wig? Always or... wear wigs, yeah. OK, so you wouldn't just go and maybe wear a scarf or a hat or...? No, I don't even go outside in the garden or anything. Really? I'll have a hoodie on. You wear a hoodie in the house? Yeah. But nobody can see you. I know. With my wigs on, I just feel feminine. I've got different styles, different colours. Each wig makes me feel different. When they come off, who are you then? I don't know who I am. I just close myself away. Because I don't look in the mirror and think, you look beautiful. How can I expect somebody else to look at me and think I'm beautiful if I don't believe it myself? After I stopped wearing my artificial legs at 23, I really felt empowered and it freed me up completely. So Carly, for her, her sexuality, femininity is very much tied up with hair. Um, so it will be interesting to have her photograph taken, maybe without the wigs, to hopefully show her how feminine and beautiful she is, even without a head of hair. She's really warm. She's also got a sense of humour. Like, she on has. the phone, I was really enjoying that. And you can see that from these pictures. Yeah. She's very beautiful. She is, very. I said to her, you know, do you see yourself as beautiful? And she's like, no, because there's no hair. So it's kind of like she needs to claim the baldness, yeah. you know. To own what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you will try and do some without a oh, thousand yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's my goal. Great. But we build up to that. Sure. I'm very excited about Carly. Promptly at nine, a woman arrives with great bone structure and a sack full of false hair to hide it under. The problem isn't her head, it's what's inside it. Can we have a quick look at your clothes, though, first? I'm a bit of a rock chick. Oh, no, that's great. No, that's really good. There's four brilliant outfits there. I'm nervous about doing the shoot. I'm not one that's enjoyed having my photo taken. I'd love to be able to look at myself in the mirror with no hair and think, do you know what, girl, you look, you look good. She's got beautiful bone structure, really gorgeous brown eyes. The challenge is just to make her feel comfortable, I think, and feel um, confident. Lovely. I'll put your on your shoulder. Great. She's in the flow, but these could be pictures for a wig maker. Carly is always trying to pass as just ordinary, to look like anyone else. But there's a warrior woman hiding under the hairpiece, 
and I have to try to set her free. It looks really nice in colour because of the tones. Yeah. Now, what I love is your eyes smile very naturally. So, yeah, I was about to say, it's one of those that look quite nice. Looks good. I actually like a photo of me. Really? <laughs> is that a first? <laughs> Pretty much. Are you surprised? Yeah. You can see when she's looking at the pictures, she's thinking, oh, I actually really do look, look good, I look stunning. Mm -hmm. And that must just feel so amazing. And then leaning forward towards me. That's it, great. Just lean forward to me more, and then try different things with your eyes. Really great. Have a look at that. Oh, hello. I didn't think I would look like that. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> Lead into me a little bit more. That's lovely. Wow, that's amazing. Really lovely. Like, oh, hello. I like that one. That does not look like a wig. I do still feel conscious in them. I th honestly think that might be in your imagination. I think people are thinking you're hot. That's my favourite. It's lovely. Great. OK, new wig. Take the wig off. I think she's going to get there. I think we're going to do it today. And I think she's going to love it. It's still quite surreal. But it's good. It's a nice feeling. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's great. Can let your hair fall forward. So far, the camera is capturing the old Carly. Rankin is just biding his time. I can see it's a bit overwhelming. There's quite a lot going on, so I don't want to be too pushy. And chin down a little more. Great, they're really nice. I love, I love both of them. You look happy. OK, cool. Shall we try no wig? Yeah. And let's just go tough with it. It's very obvious to me that it's in the head. It's a really good shape. How are you feeling? Nervous. I might as well be stood there naked. Really? I don't feel feminine. You feel more like boyish? Yeah. I love that kind of androgynous, boyish look. But I think with Carly, she loves that kind of glamorous girl thing. And she's got no choice. Let's try and do this. Let's go, let's go and do it. Let's hide you in that jacket. Yeah, good, good. Well, I think you look beautiful. The window. Come and have a quick look. So we started here, which actually is beautiful. Powerful. Powerful, definitely. In, for me, looking at it, because that's how I feel. So many people make a choice to look like mm. this. And I think, actually, you look it's good. not my choice. If it was my choice, it would be different, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. People don't know it's not your choice. So you don't look ill. No. You look very healthy. Maybe if you were just to go, well, it is my choice. It's just a different personality. It's such a lovely shape. That is quite a nice picture. You look beautiful. That's lovely. It's chin down a little more. You got a beautiful head. I don't suppose I've ever really looked and appreciated it. Is that how you Doesn't, feel? I, yeah. These pictures are really strong. Yeah. I'm proud of them. But own it and enjoy it because personality-wise, it's like <coughs> it shines through and people will be responding to that. 100%. A lot of it's in your mind. How's it feeling? I'm getting Look there. At that. It's fantastic. Really stunning. I think I should own the look. Mm. It's yours. And it doesn't make you any less feminine. Oh. Feel good about you. You've been so brave doing this. Now you've got to take that out on the street. I do feel looking at the, the pictures now that I could brave it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. David is a student of psychology. It helps with his positive attitude to his neurofibromatosis. Half his face is distorted by tumours. As a teenager, David was taunted on the street and took refuge in computer games. At 22, he's a realist. Physically, you've got um, one ear way lower than the other. Really lopsided face, basically. Um, but I don't have a problem looking in the mirror anymore. I remember one module in psychology where we learned about facial symmetry and like the, how the more symmetrical your face was, the more beautiful you are. And uh, that was an interesting lecture. Back in the day, I had this long, really greasy, shite haircut, which would just cover all my face. I think the long hair sort of reinforced that sort of hiding away aspect to the whole facial disfigurement. David's agreed to meet in London. I want to get him to own his difference and celebrate it. Thank you very much. 
Knowing he has a history of hiding himself away, I've asked to meet in a cafe with more glass than the Crystal Palace. In a mirror, who did you see staring back at you? Just someone I didn't want to be, really. I was very self-pitying. I always thought, oh, why me? Were you the sort of person that would look in magazines all perfectly photoshopped and think, I want to look like that? I suppose aspiring to that was never sort of my aim, but just aspiring to have sort of a normal face. When I was a kid, I thought, oh, I will come out with a perfectly symmetrical face. And... Nobody's got that. You know that, don't you? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do you cope with the way that people react to you? I see if a uh, kid point and laughed at the street. I wouldn't punch the kid. I'd go home and punch your wall or something like that. OK, but did you want to punch the kid? Yeah. How do you feel about the, the photo shoot? Yeah, certainly out of my comfort zone. OK. I feel excited about it, because it's a project where I'm just, like, because he wants to, like, portray weaknesses as strengths. I've got no idea how he's going to do that, so... I think he will bring out you, and you yeah. will be blown away. I'm quite excited to see it, yeah. definitely. I think he lacks confidence, self-belief. He expects a lot from himself. If somebody said, oh, he's half a good-looking face, I actually think all of him's a good-looking face. He is a unique package. I don't think he feels that at all at the moment, but I hope that he will do eventually. David's is an early morning shoot. The studio takes time to heat up and everyone's a bit cold. But David's immediately warm and engaging. Did you get people being rude? Yeah, staring. Uh, which you can understand, because they're just curious. You know, once or twice, you know, I've had people pointing and laughing. Just... His facial disfigurement isn't what you see first. The other side of his face is really handsome. And even though he's clearly out of his comfort zone, he's got great charm. I can't wait to photograph him. Your hair's super straight, so I just want to put, like, a little bit of product in it. Yeah, that would be cool. Good stuff. David didn't have any photos of himself, but his mum has sent all she has. So I just got these pictures okay. of him. So it's progressed. Yeah. And got worse. The smiles. Yeah, they go... That one. Started school, probably. Yeah. And then definitely... And then definitely, yeah. I'm not enjoying this. However much fun he's putting on, I think this is a big, bigger deal for oh, him. Oh, yes, totally. This is definitely his first like dip into yes. discussing it like this Absolutely. in this way and I'm yeah. just a little nervous for him. The difference between what people call their good side and their bad is usually very subtle. In David's case it's obvious and I've got to decide whether to feature his right cheek or hide it in shadow. David wants a symmetrical face but he can't have it. I want to show him the nobility of the one he's got so he can accept it unflinchingly. David avoids selfies, but he lives with selfie culture. The phone camera gives you control of your image, but that stops you taking a revealing portrait. Great, let's, try, let's have a look. You have to give the control to a photographer to be vulnerable for the truth to show. If you could just come over here. A portrait's about capturing personality. Your hair look great. But a background can help. These old arches contrast with something in David that's invisible but real his freshness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, to me, it's good, but, like, I would rather, like, try something in the studio. Yeah? Because I love this picture, because it's quite honest. Imperfections are beautiful. That one's, like, I say, one of my favourite of the bunch. It does feel like a painting. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I take that as a compliment. So we'll start kind of doing what we were doing before, but try and just, like, really be as honest as you can with it. Great. That's good. And relax your mouth a little. That's really interesting. Great, let's have a quick look at those. So you're un not relaxed again. See, like, I think that's... Yeah, I like that. ...interesting. Let's try without your glasses. Okay. His face is amazing. As a photographer, that kind of... the whole kind of way it's, you know, made up is really beautiful to shoot because it's so unique. He's such a young kid dealing with it, but... I'd love him to embrace it a bit more, you know? They're really strong. I'm more inclined to the black and white, I think. OK, let's have one more go. And I want to put a jacket on you. I just want to get collar. Beautiful. So, look. Like, come and have a look. Something like that, maybe? I like that as well. You've got an amazing cheekbone. Any favourites? I think that one, to be honest. Yeah. It's interesting, David likes the picture that shows his right eye and cheek illuminated. 
That feels healthy. I think they're amazing. The one with the collar, particularly, it's so striking, so strong and comfortable in his skin. And I, I'm not sure that that's how he feels. It's really hard to tell with him. He's not jumping up and down and getting really excited, so it's quite hard to to tell. Strange, but fun. Mm, yeah, I think that's my favourite, probably. The bigger collar is nice, though, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, like, it feels good. I've never sort of had a photo that I've actually really liked of myself. But I actually quite like how I look in that one. There's part of me that doesn't want to hide you in the shadow, and you look confident there as well. The not hiding is somehow more powerful. Well, yeah. Well, another thing I'd quite like to try. Have yeah. you tried 45? I felt like we were being too safe, so I went to the wide angle lens. It made me just have to go closer to him, and he had to deal with me in his space. You have to confront the camera. That's great. I like that one a lot, actually. There's something kind of quite confrontational in it. I think you're very likeable in this one, but I think <laughs> in terms of this project, I think that's better, because your journey is more about confronting how you feel about it. That photo, I think, makes me like the, or oh, this side of my face more. So, yeah, I, I think I prefer that one. OK, great. Yeah. Great. Sorted. So I can see sort of confidence in that, which okay. I didn't necessarily know I had. I've got something that for once, like, I've looked at my face and I actually quite like it. I've never seen you look like that before. I mean, that is, is definitely beautiful. Yeah, It no, really is. I really, really do like that. Consumerism creates insecurities that cost money to fix, preferably temporarily. This project offers no fix, just the evaluation of long-held opinions. For a few moments, three people have enjoyed the fresh idea that looking unconventional is desirable. But could they feel better permanently? Photographs now come en masse, are glanced at and deleted. I want these portraits to speak their truth forever. Oh, that's, that's cool. Wow. Oh, I really like that, yeah. That's fabulous. That makes me feel quite proud, actually. That's really cool. I'm really happy with that. That portrays what I'd hoped it would. And that shows me my most stripped back. That's everything I could have wanted them more. I couldn't even imagine a result like that. That's what I've always seen Damien as. Even the facial expression is unbowed, I think. Yeah. Quite difficult to take in, really. That's my face. It's, like, surprisingly easy to look at, like... I don't, I almost don't want to stop looking at it. I think this is one of the first times that I've actually sort of looked and liked the photo of me. This would give me some inner strength rather than something I want to hide away from. And I'd be proud to put this up on the wall. This actually, you know, captures my whole face, disfigurement and all. But I still really like it. Carly couldn't move on. She was trapped in the childhood moment that her hair first fell out. Her picture is about the now. It records a beauty not everyone has, a gift. It's amazing. I see a strong, emotionally powerful person. Can you see how beautiful it is? I can, yeah. It's just such a lovely picture. It's fantastic, isn't it? We are still beautiful. It is just hair. Absolutely. I do feel, in a strange way, glad that it's happened. I look in the mirror now and I think, oh, I don't want you to grow back. <laughs> I've got used to it. That was the best day of my life. And my confidence has really flourished. I can look in the mirror myself and say, yeah, you're really all right. I've had a long, hard journey to get to that. Long journey. 100% completely worth it. Alana yearns to look like everyone else, but believes that she is horribly unique. We can't hope to cure her, but at least she'll have a picture of the truth. That's if she makes it to the studio. Her therapist has done his best. I do have a concern that Alana might pull out on the day of the photo shoot. She might spot a particular flaw in her appearance, end up trying harder to cover it up. That can really trigger uh, BDD, and it may mean that those feelings of shame and anxiety will prevent her from coming. Her mum has sent me some of the few snaps that do feature Alana with her brothers before her fear of the camera kicked in. To me, kids always look good in pictures. These are all kids growing up. Their dad's taking pictures of them. Yes, they're a bit forced, but they're just, all the dad's trying to do is go, I get them, you know, something to remember. And that's what's lovely. Whereas now what people are doing 
more and more often is taking pictures with an idea about how they're going to look in them. What's strange about looking at these pictures is how this person has turned into this other person. Alana represents everything that I'm about. So I'm about people feeling good in pictures and feeling comfortable. But of course, the pictures that I take, I'm sure, influence people. So I kind of feel I'm part of the problem. Alana is the selfie generation with a fixed idea of beauty created by the camera. I want to use the same technology to make a picture that shows the natural born beauty her mum Scarlett sees. I noticed today that Alana didn't have any makeup on. It's amazing. I think because she really wants to do this, that's yeah. sort of made her get over her fears. Makeup's her safety blanket. This is definitely a, a one off. It's not about the makeup though, it's about being touched. Have you had anyone else do your makeup? On? Never. It's something I'm quite nervous about. I've not let anyone do it. I didn't let mom do it. I feel guilty because my skin is disgusting. I feel bad for the other person that has to touch my skin, but I'm doing okay. I'm sort of trying to refocus my attention and we're chatting, so it's making it easier. I'm nervous. I don't really know what to expect still. <laughs> she wasn't 100% confirming that she was going to do it, but she's in. She's going for it. She looks great. Having the hair and makeup team, I think anything that helps them have a bit of defense and a bit of being in control, anything that gives enemy confidence is good. It isn't only Alana that needs confidence. Ranking is nervous. How are you feeling? I'm OK at the mm -hmm. moment, yeah. I'm OK. Where did this thing come from? They always try to figure it out, and they, they, they never did. I just really want to hear what's going on in her head. I'm used to people being nervous of the process and nervous of being under the microscope, but I've never met anybody that actually hates it. They don't like to see themselves, so I couldn't be more nervous. Alana's shoot is different. The others came willingly, but she is here reluctantly. Rankin is on the back foot. Can you do one of us together? He's offering a unique portrait, but she might not see that at all. Great, let's go and have a look. I really don't like the way I look. Tell me why. I really hate it. <laughs> Sorry. What don't you like? It's OK, just be honest. Literally Everything. all of it, yeah. She doesn't like it. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. And she's embarrassed. She's like, I'm sorry. And she doesn't need to be said, sorry. Right, we're going to use this. It's called a leaf blower. Really looking through the lens. Great. Great. They're OK. It's not that bad. <laughs> I don't want my photos to be taken by anybody else. I hate that feeling. If the camera is directed anywhere in my vicinity, then I'm completely anxious. So I like that because it's a bit sillier. Yeah, okay. Pretty, I mean, sense. you look pretty hot. That's a beautiful picture. Can I get that one? I just gorgeous. find it really confusing because... It okay. I don't know. I don't, I'm just seeing something completely different. I'm trying to think what we could do to make it more acceptable for you. It's not the photos I dislike, it's me and them. Can we um, just get the machine going? I could see her body language was screaming like, this is not what I want. There's too many people watching. BDD wants you to feel terrible about yourself. It wants to bully you. My anxiety was massively high. There were lots of other people in the room that were watching. I was worried about people judging me or laughing or staring at how disgusting I am. Some of them are okay. It's not the photos. I like the photos of me. It's it's me and them. What pitch can we do that you're gonna? I don't know. I knew what a big deal the photo shoot was, and I actually felt really guilty saying that I didn't like the pictures he'd taken of me. Okay, let's let, let's lose everybody, and it will just be me and Alana. Alana appears to have broken Rankin. A photo won't cure her BDD but he needs to keep her engaged to create an image she can live with. 
I, I mean, I don't want to be this way. It's just the way I am. But it's not something I like. The photos of you are beautiful. Yeah. In my mind. And the yeah. people at home will be going, I don't understand why she's yeah. got a problem. And, yeah. But that's what's really important. They don't know what's going on in yeah. your head. Yeah. In my head, I look monstrous. People don't really realise how big society has made appearance. That's the thing. It's like we're all obsessed by it. Yeah. I'm part of this industry that makes it. What I would normally do is try and show people it's not real. I can see it's deeper. I'm not striving to be beautiful. I just kind of want to be normal. 99.9% .9 of the people that walk into my studio have got insecurities. Yeah. They've got them at about seven or eight. Yeah. You've got it double that yeah. or quadruple that. That's beautiful. I want to know now the things that Rankin is saying to her. Does she think he's just saying it? Or maybe a little, little chink has fallen into place and she's gone, OK, I'm OK to look at myself. And that's, for her, a huge step. And how does that make you feel? I'm getting used to them. I'm warming to them. Can I try that bit? Can we just get your hair so it's, like, a little more out? Yeah. Great. Love it. Great. OK, cool. Normally, when I look at picture myself, I'm like, oh. I'm not doing that, which is a good sign. I quite like that one, actually. I'm feeling better about them, definitely. I quite like this light. Yeah, it's quite... No. Between that and that, where's your vibe at? I'm OK with them. I like both. Good. So... What do you think, Mum? I like both of them. Ali, what do you think? Which one are you comfortable with at the moment? I don't know. I like both, actually. I didn't think I'd ever hear you say that. I know. That's I know. <laughs> I don't know. I love this, this one. It's a very sensitive picture, yes. you know. No, I do, I do see that. I want to say thank you, though. Oh, it's a pleasure. Really happy. I, I am too, actually. <laughs> I've not looked at a picture and not <laughs> been disgusted. I've not even been like, that's OK, ever, really. So I'm looking at them and thinking, I actually like it. For me, Alana's story sums up a modern predicament. Her illness tells us she's ugly, and worse, that the bland faces she sees on social media are beautiful. She's already got what she's trying to find, but she just can't see it. We can't achieve an ideal that's designed to exclude us. We're meant to strive for better, not accept what we are and enjoy it. But the tide is turning. The image machine that bites its fingernails when beauty becomes bad news. Edgier magazines want pictures of a broader range of beauties, and campaigns like All Walks Beyond the Catwalk help designers to think big, small, black, or gray. But social media isn't usually about challenge or innovation. It's more often about agreement and comparison. What you're like on your social network profile and how people see you and how people are looking at each other, it invades all of our lives all the time. And these four people are really living in this new world. It's tough. Everybody has hang-ups, from the supermodel to the person on the street to the guys we photographed. Theirs is amplified because they've got actual problems. And for me to be able to use photography as a way of unlocking those problems gives me the opportunity to use what I love doing and what I know is part of the problem to be able to talk about it. I've always lived with the judgment of other people. Damien, Carly, David and Alana live with it too but the judgment is in their heads. OK, they're digitally enhanced, but these portraits are honest and true. Yeah, that looks really good. Rankin is a great artist, but he can't work miracles. My eyes are crossed. My hands and my arms look really big and chunky. My nose looks crooked. My face is out of proportion. I don't necessarily know if I can see myself very positively, yet. I see a beautiful photo of my beautiful daughter, and it's just so upsetting that she can't see that. <laughs> it's been in love so long now. <laughs> it's a fabulous photo. I know she probably won't want to keep it up there, but I would. The myth that we should concern ourselves with looking so beautiful that others notice serves nobody. Building our contentment on what other people think is madness. 
Our subjects are worth a second glance because they are unusual. We haven't come out and waved the magic wand here and gone, wow, you know, they're all going to be walking proud now. They've still got their journeys to go through. But if you come from a better place and, and feel better, you can move on with your life in a more positive way. Rankin said he wanted to give them their power back. That's the power that comes from being happy with your self-image. He said he didn't think that a photograph could change someone's life. I think Carly might disagree. She thought she knew how others saw her, and she agreed with them. But she was wrong. We saw something else. The camera that's built the lie has delivered the truth. And the truth sets us free.